Hello everybody, it is Riff Raff Hornhelm and I'm back again with another presentation from the Dwarven Vault. Today we have a monster review and this carries on from our initial introduction regarding dragons and today we're going to talk about the Black Dragon or as known in the monster manual by its second title, Draco Causticus Sputum or Sputum. Not really sure. I'm not big on whatever language that is, but hey, it's what they show in the books. We talked about this in general terms in the previous episode about the background for dragons as used in the original monster manual for advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Once again, there's only 12 of them. There's six solid colored dragons. Those are all evil. And there's six metallic dragons. They're all good. Weird. But it's what they add. When this started and people were using dragons and so forth, there was obviously a lot of emphasis on dragons because of the title of the game. And the Black Dragon is one that's well known within the Pantheon uh, for obviously being black in color and having its specific breath weapon. Now, each dragon has a specific breath weapon. In the case of the Black Dragon, it is acid. They have their normal attacks, which is claw, claw, bite, and then a breath weapon. Now, Black Dragons are not exceptionally rare. They're considered uncommon. They're also not the smartest of the dragons. They tend to have a fairly average intelligence, maybe angled towards low, and they have less chance of being able to speak or perform spells like other dragons. Well, what does that really mean? In the books themselves, they break it down on the basis of whether or not they have a chance of speaking, a chance of spells, and what percentage chance would they be sleeping? Once again, as I pointed out in the first video, sleeping dragons and subdual is a very big part of the early days of D&D. Now for black dragons, the chance of them speaking is only a 30% chance. Okay, and for spells, it's a 10% chance. Sleeping, 50% of the time. Actually a pretty reasonable dragon to target if you're looking for a dragon that is not too difficult to handle. They have six to eight hit dice. Now remember, one to eight hit points on each of those hit dice. So 64 points is the maximum you should expect to see from an ancient old dragon, black dragon. Now once again, if you look at the detailed information that's earlier in the book, uh, at the start of the dragon section, there are eight different ages of dragons. Now. This relates to both their hit points and, of course, their ability to cast spells. Now, a black dragon can acquire one, just one, first level spell for each of the eight ages that they exist. So, a very young dragon is only going to have one spell. An ancient black dragon could have up to eight. Having said that, their first level spells. And with dragons only having, the black dragon, only having a 30% chance of speaking, the chance of them being able to interact with your party, both from a speech standpoint and a spell standpoint, is somewhat limited. Now, being a dwarf, well, we kind of get dragons, okay? I mean, I, uh, there's this thing called dragon sickness, okay? That, that's really from Tolkien more than from D&D, but it's used very heavily within Dungeons and Dragons. And when you have that situation, you have dwarves who go after dragons because they want their money back, or they just want money. We somewhat admired the single-minded purpose that most dragons have about acquiring a horde. As dwarves, we certainly can relate. But 
The black dragon is one of the easiest ones to target. Now, where does a black dragon live? Anywhere it wants to. <laughs> no, really, it lives in swamps and, and dank, uh, dark forests, things like that. So swamps and marshes, and really, like all dragons, they prefer a subterranean lair. So even though it's a swamp and a marsh, it'll be a cave that's adjacent to it, or a hollow under the ground, or uh, maybe even part of a dungeon system. Uh, well, that happens fairly frequently, honestly. And they are, once again, like all dragons, more of a subterranean dweller. No matter where they range, they come back to their subterranean abode. So black dragons, when you look at them, of course can be very, very scary. They can be up to 30 feet long, so they're not small. And, it, and of course, from a dwarf perspective, oh, that's big. And because they are evil, they tend to range between uh, chaotic to lawful evil uh, in how they act. And because they're not necessarily the best at speech, uh, Definitely, this is one that you probably need to take action on rather than waiting too long to try negotiation. Uh, because you're just as liable to get one that can't speak, can't throw spells, and just either wants to eat you or spit acid at you, which of course is its famous breath weapon, spitting acid. Now, us dwarves don't like that part very much at all, but we do want their treasure, and we do find that because of their intelligence, and the relatively low number of hit dice, that these are ones that we feel we can deal with. Now, in talking with all the Hornhelms out there, we asked them about what they thought of the, the Black Dragon in, in a, a difficult situation. You know, if you're a player, how do you rank it? Well, the players that I talked to said probably a five or a six. From a DM's perspective, we tend to look in that same range, anywhere from about a four to a six. Not the toughest dragon out there, but certainly still going to cause you some issues. Well, trying to eat you, things like that. You know, the normal stuff. But from a dwarven perspective, uh, these are ones that are okay to target. They don't tend to have as much treasure as some other dragons do, but all treasure is good treasure. So we're happy to take care of a black dragon if it comes up because we want their money. Unfortunately, if you're not where their lair is, or you don't know where it is, all you're doing is fighting a big lizard. You don't get anything other than the points involved with the actions to slay the dragon, rather than any points for any treasure. Now remember, this is AD&D, so treasure means something in terms of experience points. Now we all know that these have evolved significantly. All dragons have evolved within the context of the game. And once again, this is the very earliest views of the black dragon uh, because this is where it all started. So I have definitely used black dragons before, but I definitely look at them as a lower level dragon, one that's easier for the party to overcome. Not that a 30-foot-long lizard that is potentially as high as 64 hit points uh, and breathes acid is all that easy to deal with. But still, it is when you compare it to some of the other dragons we will talk about. So that's the Black Dragon. Hope you enjoyed this, found it useful, informational, weird, whatever. And we'd like you to come back and see us again soon. If you liked what you saw, please give us a like, consider subscribing, share with your friends, leave us a comment, and whatever you do, come back and see us real soon. And remember, dwarves rock!